In Fox 5 Health News and the CDC, warning of a polio-like virus spreading in children. And in rare cases, it may lead to paralysis. All right, joining us now, Dr. Serge Sugger, Chief of Infectious Diseases at Holy Name. Walk us through it, Doc. Sure, so thanks for having me, guys. You know, this is something we've seen before. This first large-scale outbreak actually happened in 2014 in Colorado. And what we've seen is this kind of, uh, this seems to reoccur every two years. This is a virus, enterovirus D68. It's the same family as poliovirus. Um, it, in general, causes a upper respiratory tract infection. So I want to reiterate, you know, from the get-go here, that for the vast majority, overwhelming majority of children that may be affected, it's just like the rhinovirus or the common cold. They get a sneeze, cough, etc. What they did see in 2014 and then 16 and 18 is that a very small segment of the population, children, progress to paralysis. We call acute flaccid myelitis. Or basically, they develop paralysis either upper extremities or upper and lower extremities. And sometimes those could be permanent. They required a long-term uh, treatment plan. And so what they saw was that there was off year. So it happened in 2014. There was circling immunity in 2015. And so there wasn't really a large number. That immunity waned in 2016, 2018, and so forth, and so on and so forth. 2020, of course, we did not see that because of COVID mitigation. So children weren't going to school, et cetera. Now 2022, again, we now have a larger population that potentially could be at risk. Only 13 cases, but still 13 cases of AFM or acute flaccid myelitis confirmed so far. I believe about 20 more cases are under investigation. So I don't think this is anything that people should be worried about, but healthcare providers in particular, pediatricians, anyone seeing children with unexplained paralysis should be aware of this and make sure they, they uh, test. It's not something we, we routinely test when we're investigating these type of cases, and this is something that we should be aware of uh, moving forward. Right, yeah, almost good info for the doctor, really, in that case. All right. All right, kind of staying on topic, more concerns about polio in Rockland County, doctor, and the surrounding areas. In fact, we're hearing the CDC says that the U.S. now added to the WHO list of countries with circulating vaccine-derived polio virus. So, Sounds like a lot of words. Break it down for us. It's a lot of words, but again, as always, let's take them on top and let's, you know, let's not make people too worried. This is not wild or endemic transmission. Remember, only two countries in the world, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and those are still continue to be the only two countries where we see endemic uh, uh, transmission of polio. The United States was eradicated in 1979. However, certain countries around the world, now the United States has been added to that list, do see these outbreaks occasionally of vaccine derived, as you mentioned, polio vaccines. Remember, two types of vaccine very quickly. The oral, which the United States was stopped to use in 2020, is a live vaccine in the inactivated. Now, the oral vaccine has some advantages. It's very easily given. You may remember uh, seeing uh, videos in the 1950s of two drops on a sugar cube, um, and it provides very, good, uh, pr provides very good protection. However, in communities of very low immunity, that virus can then, uh, that vaccine can then subsequently, uh, the virus from that vaccine can subsequently revert back to an active form. And that's what we're seeing now. In Rockland County, the wastewater was examined. They found some of this vaccine derived polio uh, uh, virus. Then they also matched that to cases in the UK as well as cases in Israel. So, what the, the suspicion here is that in certain communities with very low levels of immunity, are at risk. Now, does this, does this designation by the CDC change any recommendations? No. Remember, children already in this country is part of the backbone to get vaccinated four different doses uh, when they're first born and moving forward when they're very young. So it doesn't change anything. We should continue with uh, childhood vaccinations. We assume that most adults in this country are vaccinated. They're born in the 1950s. Before that, people often ask me, right now, you know, if you're an adult born in the 1940s, 30s, and you think you may have not been vaccinated against mm. polio, at this time, unless you're traveling to a country with, a high, with either wild transmission or you're a lab worker, a healthcare worker, traveling to a country with outbreaks, there's no need. But again, this is something that we should understand is not wild type. It's a vaccine derived. It, it is affected in communities with low immunization oh, rates. Yeah, so it just re reiterates the need and the recommendation for vaccines in childhood. Very well. All right, Dr. Sugger, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right.